Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to create a whip pan transition in Adobe Premiere Pro. So it's gonna look a little something like this right here. Just has this sort of like whip pan, uh, goes left to right, transitions over to the next frame, and we are back to, you know, playing our next frame. So what this basically is gonna be doing is sort of just mimicking that whip pan. Cause you, you know, these are both stationary shots. And instead of, you know, whipping them in real life, what we're doing is we're whipping them in Premiere Pro and simulating the effects. So let's get started. First thing we wanna do is create ourselves a new sequence to get started with. We're gonna jump into the sequence and then just drag in our footage from our project manager over here. So it's just this shot right here and this shot up here. Drag those in, change the sequence settings, and here we have the two shots. Let me just disattach that audio so we don't have to listen to it. And we are good to get started right here. So what we wanna do is we want to simulate that motion. The first thing we need to do is we need to simulate that sort of transition from left to right. To do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to bring it to the, the transition point. And then I'm going to go down and create myself an adjustment layer. To do that, you can just go up to File, New, or you can go down here to this little New button. And we're just gonna click on the adjustment layer, click OK, and then drag that through right here. Now, this is gonna be sort of where the effect is centered, so we wanna make that sure this is just as long as sort of the entire uh, effect. So what I wanna do is I like to make it sort of five frames on the back side and then 10 frames on the right side over here. So we can hold the shift key to jump or we can just move with the arrow keys or click on these buttons, any way to do it. Just go to the center and move from there. To the left, about five or so, you know, you can change the timings so however works for you. And then I'm gonna bring this into here. And then to the right, we're gonna go 10 frames like so. Now, once we are into our adjustment layer, what we wanna do is, like I said, simulate that motion. So we're going to go into our effects tab. It might be down here or somewhere else in the program. Just find the effects tab. And what we're gonna search for is offset. Offset is under video effects and then distort. We're gonna go ahead and grab offset. We're going to drop it onto our adjustment layer right here. And what we're gonna do is going to offset basically the uh, the X direction right here. And what that's gonna do is, if you'll see, once I start the offset, uh, it drags the footage over like so. And so now it's gonna actually look like we are sort of moving this footage from here over to the next shot. And so we wanna animate that into the shot. So let's go ahead and go back to default here. Gonna bring this up to the very beginning. We're going to turn on the animation, toggle animation over here. And then what we're gonna do is head towards the very right side. And we're just gonna take this X, so this is X, this is the Y position. We're gonna take the X and we're just going to invert it. So instead of 960, we're gonna go negative 960. And so now you'll see that it does a perfect transition from one you know, full frame, pulls one frame over, and then ends at a full frame as well. So now we have the movement sort of going. What we wanna do next is we wanna add some of that blur in because right now it just looks like we're sort of, you know, grabbing a shot and then transitioning it. It's, it's a cool effect on its own, but it isn't that whip pan that we were looking for. So what we want to do is add in a directional blur. Uh, we can add in really any blur, but the reason that directional works the best here is because we are moving in a sort of uh, very stable direction. We're moving from right to left, which is going to create a very stable blur. Uh, there's not gonna be you know, any blur going this way or coming up. It's gonna go directly right to left. Directional blur will allow us to do that. So right now, if we increase the blur length, it's gonna go top to bottom. We don't want that. We want it to go left to right. So we just need to choose um, something perpendicular to that, which is just 90 or 270. And now the blur goes left to right like so. And so what we wanna do is go to the very beginning of our adjustment layer. We want to start the blur at zero, so toggle the animation at zero. Move to the center, drag, whoops, not the direction. We don't wanna to toggle the direction, we wanna to toggle the blur length right here. Then move to the center, and we're gonna drag this up to maybe like a 130 blur right here and then go to the right side and then just drag it back down. The reason we made the right side a little bit longer is because the effect sort of works best if we go fast and then come back down slowly, uh, relatively slowly. So now we have the effect starting off like so, if you'll see right here. Looking pretty good so far. A couple things so far that I've noticed is the first is that if you'll notice, it starts to blur immediately. And the problem with that is it sort of looks like it blurs before the motion is happening, which makes it look a little bit weird. So what I like to do is just go in here 
and just go find that blur, the directional blur right here, and just move it one frame over. I don't know, it just feels a little bit better where the motion is already happening now before the blur starts happening. So maybe move it over to right here. And now you'll see that the one frame beneath it, we're already starting to get that, that movement and then the blur starts to come in. And I just feel like that makes it just a touch smoother in my eyes. The next thing I like to do is I don't like to keep this as linear as it is right now, meaning that every single one of these frames is moving the exact same amount as the other frame. What I like to do is to ease it in and ease it out. So we're gonna go to these first two keyframes. You can highlight both of them at the same time just by dragging like so. And we're just going to go ahead and go into temporal impolation, and we're going to ease these out. And then we're going to go to this one, uh, the ones on the right, and we're going to ease them in. And if you drop down this right here, you kind of see what we're doing here. We are just creating this where it's going to go sort of velocity is medium fast and then comes back down like so. And you can see that sort of creates that, that quick whip. So it's just, it's like it's slowly moving over then right where we need to sort of clean it up, aka, you know, sort of where that line happens, that transition happens. It goes really fast and then it slows itself back down with this arc right here. So now we have it looking really, really smooth, just like so. And that is really all of the effect. You can add some you know, additional effects inside the blur here if you think they look better. Some people like to use, uh, I've seen uh, posturize, I've seen different blurs, I've seen sort of slight color changes, like they, people will blend the colors just a little bit better because you know how there's this like right when it transitions, there's this jump in color. I've seen people sort of transition the color a little bit better, but this is the overall basic sort of form right here, how it starts slow and then sort of slides over to the right in that sort of beautiful look right there. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and dump in the comment section below or on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make a video every other day on Adobe-related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.